we're not going to use the five-step crossover rule. We're going to use the electron dot diagram. And so we start off here with oxygen, and oxygen has six valence electrons. We know sodium has one, and we know that metals have a tendency to lose electrons to the nonmetals. So let's watch that. I watch us lose that electron. Watch sodium lose it. Now, oxygen requires one more, so we need one more sodium. And that other sodium is also going to lose that valence electron to oxygen. And now, both sodiums are stable. Both the one oxygen is stable, which means that for us to combine sodium and oxygen together, they form a formula of Na2O. You can do this without using the, the electron dot diagram. You can use the five-step crossover rule. And please refer to um, the previous um, episodes on the crossover rule. Okay. So, and then what's left once we've done this is, well, we need to balance it. So how do you balance an equation? Well, you separate your reactants from your products. Okay. And we list the atoms that we have both on the reactive side and the product side and then we list how many of each that we have and we have as follows and now if, if we notice the sodium here we have on the reactive side we have one as opposed to two on the product side so we need to increase the sodiums on the the reactive side on the product side however the oxygens are the ones that we need to increase so remember you're always looking to see which side needs to increase the number of atoms that it has so let's try to balance the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a 2 in front of sodium, which means now the sodium count is going to be 2 to 2. Okay. Now we want to go over to the other side. We want to increase the number of oxygens here. So we're going to put the number 2 here. And that 2 is going to increase the number of oxygens here. 2 to 2, and now we no longer need to balance that so far, but once we've done that, we notice that it also has changed the sodium count. The sodium count now has moved up to 4, which means now that I need to increase the sodiums here, which means this 2 no longer works for us. And don't panic. It's okay if you come across that because all we have to do is change the number, that number 2, to the number that we need, which is... A four and now this sodium count moves up to four which now allows us to have our sodiums balanced at four on either side and our oxygens balanced on both sides as well okay let's look at uh, the next slide here Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds. Now we're going to be looking at two that we're going to consider as non-metals. So we have nitrogen and hydrogen. And remember, both of them are diatomic. Okay, so both nitrogen and hydrogen are diatomic, which means when we're writing out the formula, they're N2 plus H2. Okay, now... When we're putting these together, well, it works a little bit differently to the, the um, binary ionic compounds. We're not going to be using the five-step crossover rule. In fact, right now what, what happens is we're going to be forming a covalent bond. So we know that the nitrogen has five valence electrons. It needs three more to become stable. So where do you think it's going to pick them up from? Well, it's going to share them with three hydrogens. So the electrons here are going to share with one another, but they're not going to give them away. They're going to share them, forming single bonds between the one nitrogen and three hydrogens, which thus means that when we combine nitrogen and hydrogen together, we form a formula of NH3. Okay. Now we have to balance the following equation. Same rule applies. We're going to separate the reactants from our products, and we have so we have uh, nitrogen and hydrogen, and we list them in the same order on both sides. Okay, we have two nitrogens on the reactant side, we have one on the product side. We have two hydrogens on the reactant side, but we have three on the product side, which means when we're trying to balance it, we need to increase the sodiums on the product side 
and we need to increase the hydrogens on the reactant side. Okay, but we're not going to balance the following equation. We're just going to have it balanced already for us here. And these are the numbers that um, pretty much we would put as coefficients for these compounds. Okay, and we're balanced. So let's look at a few others. Okay, let's look at a few other quick um, compounds. We have lithium combined with chlorine. Metal, non-metal. Okay, so we have lithium plus chlorine. Chlorine being diatomic. Lithium and chlorine, when they come together, they form the, the compound LiCl. Remember that this is used, if you use the, the five-step crossover rule, that's how you get the lithium chloride. Okay, and to balance it, we place twos in those places. Aluminum and bromine, again, metal, non-metal. Aluminum is just Al, bromine is diatomic, so it's Br2, so Al plus Br2 produces, and if we use the five-step crossover rule, okay, remember, aluminum is plus three, bromine is negative one. Don't worry about that number. That number is not going to play a role in this final formula. Look at that, Al, Br3. Okay, we have Br2 on this side. They don't mean anything together. Okay, we have bromine on one side, but together, in order to put these together, we need to do the five-step crossover rule. Okay, and then finally, what's left to do, well, is to just balance the, um, the two sides. Okay, and the last one that we're going to be looking at is potassium plus sulfur, okay, potassium, K, sulfur is just S, we combine them together, again, metal, non-metal, using the five-step crossover rule, and we get the formula K2S, and in order to balance this one, real simple, just place uh, the number two in front of the potassium on the product side, okay,